All right, welcome back. Sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman is here to discuss the science of pillow talk and why loose lips may literally sink ships. Right? So Absolutely. what is up with this? Yeah, isn't it interesting that we overshare after sex? Women tend to do this especially, but men do this as well. And what the researchers did is they took a, a group of, a sample of, of 38 people, men mm -hmm. and women, and they gave them uh, something that is called sexual priming versus neutral priming. So the sexual priming had to do with uh, being exposed to erotic but non-pornographic pictures. For men, of course, it was very sexy women in different poses, yeah. and for women it was sexy men walking on the beach, laying around, exercising, doing different things. And the neutral priming was something very boring. It was a fish in its natural environment. Something That's very, boring. <laughs> very boring. <laughs> Extremely. And the next stage of the study had to do with them, with these, uh, with the sample, actually text messaging people that are strangers to them. The next stage was was sharing. Uh, um, a life event that influenced them. And then they went and measured what kind of exposure actually created more revealing information. What do you think? I can only guess. Why don't you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> of course, that the sexual priming made them speak much, much looser. The looser lips uh, worked Six much well. Yeah, of course. And then uh, they decided to take a new, uh, a new version, a new sample of people, and examine it even further. This time, they exposed in the sexual priming. They exposed them to a video that had to do a very sexual video. It was uh, just for the sake of it. It was Angelina Jolie and Antonio Banderas having sexual yes, intercourse. A, I guess that's a good primer. That was Work, yes. And then the neutral priming was a cat, a cat video, something okay. very casual that we see online every time. And then the second part of it was to expose these people in person to strangers and ask them to reveal a very embarrassing part of their lives. Then exa again, and they went and examined it. Oh my it. gosh. And it turned out that this time it was three times the revealing information that they shared with the strangers, completely strangers. I want to make sure that everybody understands. So what is it about, uh, you know, uh, being exposed to uh, sexual priming and, you know, being exposed to sexual stimuli and exposing our information without even being asked? So, of course, we're prone to it. The first thing that comes to mind is that we, uh, we, we want to share with someone because we are exposed to someone. Someone, maybe physically, and maybe on this end, not even physically, but thinking about sex makes us want to be close to someone to get them, yeah, to get them to share and be intimate with us. But there's also uh, an evolutionary explanation to this because men and women were supposed to create some form of bond to create a, a good platform for offspring to be raised under the, the Look, sociologically this was kind of how it worked. But there's got to be time for getting to know someone before you start like. Blurping things out. Well, obviously not really, yeah. not really. But we take into account that there's the the essence of vasopressing and oxytocin that come into uh, into the act even when we're not having sex with someone, just having a conversation about sex. Mm -hmm. It primes certain pieces so to certain places in so our it literally brain. Literally goes on in our brain. Really chemistry. goes on in our brain chemistry. Wow. And for women, because <laughs> we're so influenced by oxytocin much more than men, we tend to have. You know, this tendency to just speak and speak and speak after so sex. Does the study get into anything of like when people start telling way too much information, how many times like the guy or the girl will actually how many not times call you back after oh, after revealing in terms of TMI? what turns them off? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can have this great experience, and then it's like, oh, when I was a child, this happened, and then it's like a romance much. killer, you yes, know? Yes, yes, it actually, it, it absolutely can kill your libido and your interest, but it doesn't touch this subject because both genders showed that they had the same interest in sharing information. They actually really uh, timed it to, to examine the same amount of people, men and women, mm -hmm. to see if, if women, you know, had the more tendency to do this. So it wasn't the case. And I just want to say that if we look at it, Freudian experience, explanation for it is, of course, you know, that sexual uh, sexual uh, priming is, is relevant for everything in our lives. And if you look back, if we are looking at our childhood, just revealing releases us from many difficulties that we just well, endure. people want to connect. I mean, it's human nature. Life. Yes. Well, Lee Moore, thank you so much. Such an interesting thank study. Thank you. My pleasure. You always keep the interesting <laughs> stories coming.